What's cracking? What's cracking, everybody? I know it's been um, nearly a week since I uploaded um, a video. However, a lot of strange things have been happening within this week. Um, first started off um, heading to the gym, riding one of my motorcycles, the orange one. And right, maybe a good five, 10 minutes on it, the back pressure release valve shoots out of the fucking head. Lose all compression, bike shutting off, that bike down. And I don't have the um, big tools to take those heads off to send them out. Um, so I'm gonna get it down to the shop, to my shop so I can actually work on it there. And um, <clears throat> I'm gonna also go with some bigger valves this time, make it a little more faster, trying to get the horsepower up to right at 170 horses on a road glide, Harley Davidson. Um, so after that, I go try to ride the gray one. The whole charging system burnt out, music and everything. I'm like, what the fuck? All right, okay. This is all in the same week. So I go to jump in a Beamer. I'm driving it. All of a sudden, the brakes goes out on that motherfucker. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, this is signs for me to sit my ass down somewhere, right? So I get it down to the shop to change the brakes, the rotors, the sensors, the pads, everything, right? Beautiful. Here it is, New Year's Eve. I'm driving trying to rush home to get dressed because I was going over to um, Nate house because we was having a New Year's Eve party. And here it is, I'm driving, rushing home, hit a pothole, blow the front tire off the front rim. That was a Saturday. I finally get the car home, keep in mind, I have one AAA tow left, right? I finally get the car home. So here it is Sunday. I'm looking for a tow. I mean, I'm looking for a tire shop. Uh, finally found the tire shop open. Called AAA. AAA left me hanging for about two and a half, close to three hours. So I said, fuck it. These low profile tires, I'm about to just slow crawl this bitch. So I slow crawled the car um, all the way to the shop, which is like the shop was only like no more than 40 minutes but I slow crawled it. What that means is I drove under 30 the whole entire way, right? I get to the tire shop. They change the tire. I go to start the car up. The car won't start up. Kept cutting off, right? I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this car? So about a good hour goes by. Had to get it jumped. It starts up. Uh, I'm heading, uh, I'm trying to head down to the house and everything. Uh, so then the, that Tuesday, I get it to the shop. They run diagnostics and everything. They said, we don't know if it's the, um, if it's the, um, the spark plugs, the coils, it's three fuel pumps on them fucking BMWs. I don't know if it's two of the, one of the two fuel pumps in the, under the hood, or the one major one in the back. Okay, car start acting perfect. Not reading, nothing crazy. No check engine light on. So I drive home Tuesday night. Here it is Wednesday. On my way to the gym. And it's been raining nearly every time something's breaking down on me, right? On my way to the gym. <laughs> car cuts completely off. Stopped all traffic. I'm stuck. I'm calling AAA. They're like, are you in a safe place? No, I'm not. I'm in the middle of the streets. I'm in the middle of the road. Two good Samaritans came to try to help me. We couldn't get the car to go in neutral. All them fucking different computers on that fucking car. I don't like smart shit. I need uh, I need a car that's uh, Ebonics ready. <laughs> like an old Chevy. So, couldn't get it in neutral. So the guy, I felt bad for him. It's raining down and everything. I was like, dude, you don't have to wait. 
Like, he like, I'm going to wait to see so you can get through with AAA and everything. I'm like, okay. So I finally get through with him. The only way I was like, dude, they coming. You don't have to wait here. Really nice dude. The other guy that was trying to push from the back, I started the car. Duh, 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 and I hear him and throw it in neutral. He tried to push it. Bloom, bloom. He damn near fucked him up. He just, he just left. He didn't say nothing. He just got the hell up out of there. <laughs> so I was like, damn, I damn near fucked this man up. And he trying to help me. Good deeds don't come unpunished. That's what they say. So, um, at this time, Nate called me. I think maybe Nate probably see me in the middle of the road. So I'm like, oh, shit, that's fucking embarrassing. Nate see me in the middle of the road. I'm in this nice-ass car, and his motherfucker won't start up. So he's like, where you at? I'm like, man, I was on my way to the gym. I broke down the middle of the road. He said, when? Last night? No, right now. I'm in the middle of the road. He like, what? I said, Nate, I need to sit my ass down somewhere. I said, I don't know what's going on, but I'm getting all these signs to sit my ass down somewhere, right? So here go, Nate. He was like, damn, man. He was like, well, maybe it's time for you to get another car. I'm like, this motherfucker don't even have miles on it like that. All of a sudden, two patrol cops pulls up on their bikes. These dudes clout me so bad. <laughs> Man, I, they, I I wind up going in the trunk. I gave them the all gas, no brakes hoodies. I gave both of them one because I had uh, two in the trunk for some particular reason. And um, so I'm talking to them. Then when I finally, the, the AAA, the woman sent three of them out there. So they finally got the car on the thing and everything. So I... um. I um, told Nate, I'm going to call him back. So when I finally called him back, he said, dude, you knew them cops? I said, hell no. Nah. He said, man, you was having a conversation like that with them and you don't know them? I said, I don't know. Like, shit, they was clowning like a motherfucker. Them cops was funny as hell. So here we are. I missed the gym for eight days. I uh, thought I was losing weight. I didn't look like I was losing weight, but I thought I was losing volume and weight or whatever. Nope. Stayed on top of my eating. Stayed on top of my resting. My liquids. And everything. So the moral of this story is. When life started hitting you from every angle. I mean where you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You got to keep on grinding. You just got to sit your ass down. Try to uh, figure out what it is that you are doing too fast to where you need to slow down, right? And you keep grinding. You don't just give up. You don't just, oh, woe is me. You don't just think that the world and everybody is out to get you because you got to understand the universe is going to do certain things to keep you from going certain places that you shouldn't be at that could potentially save your life. I don't know what it was that was it was trying to stop me from doing. Maybe it didn't want me on the road on my bike. Could have probably got myself hurt on my bikes. Maybe it didn't want me on the road in my car. Could have got myself hurt in a car. Or I could have potentially hurt someone else. Whatever it was, I knew I had to sit down somewhere. I sat down. I didn't drive nobody vehicles. I didn't do nothing. But... Cleared my thoughts, cleared my mind. And not once I said, oh, woe is me. I just know that it was some bad energy out there and I needed it to pass by. So I had to be patient. And by me being patient, everything got back on track. You know, so, um, you know, I know a lot of y'all out there probably in lost your job, probably can't find a job, probably business that you have going on and slow down some ain't going exactly how you want it to go and everything but you got to have consistency look at me i've been ridiculed when it comes to this fitness business you know what i'm saying i mean treated very unfairly to where that they don't even care to hear nothing i have to say right uh black ball to where i have to work extremely harder than everyone in this business i'm doper than a lot of these dudes and they try to push me to the back like I'm not dope, like like I'm not of any value. You see what I'm saying? But this is the thing. By me being consistent 
And knowing me, the doors is open now. Why? Because I kick them bitches in. Every time they close them bitches in my face, I kick them off because it's wide open. Boom! Who it? Uh -huh. They close it up. I'm kicking them in to her eventually. They say, you know what? Don't even hang another door up. Just let him come on in here. And then people's finding out now, like, damn, this is really a, a dope, humble, genuine guy. Look at it. I've been exactly the same way that I came out, and that's just been raw and uncut. I matured a lot. You know, I matured a whole lot. Like on the RX Muscle, Armin, he asked me, do I still, uh, am I still cool with Big Boy and the rest of the guys? I said, I'm cool with everyone. You know what I'm saying? I said, I just don't hang with them dudes no more. I don't do work with them dudes because they highlight this, this street prison tough guy mentality. And I can't afford to be around nothing like that in this fitness world and now in my real world. You know, in, in my regular life, I'm transitioning from all of that. Why? Because I'm really what they trying to portray. I'm really what they trying to portray. And I don't portray that. You see what I'm saying? Don't no gangster go around portraying himself and trying to act like a gangster. He's cool. He's at home cooking. He's with the kids. He out there grinding on top of the business, the hustles and all of that. That's what real gangsters do. And they don't run in packs. If y'all notice, y'all never see my truck with a lot of peoples. Like that expo. How many people y'all see me with? When I got stopped, I was by my fucking self. By the time people see the commotion, people know me. Now, three, now it's like three of us over here. Out of three, four of us, only two was doing something. You see what I'm saying? The other shit was just chaos. Why? Because I don't run in packs. Cowards run in packs. They like, oh, Mac, you call them cowards. I'm calling every dude that got to be in a pack all the time a coward. Because that's what it is. It's an intimidation factor. So, I ain't nothing happened to where that I don't, I don't fell out with anyone. I'm just transitioning where I'm going. You see what I'm saying? And where I'm going and where I'm headed, that's not needed. Because if the shit hit the fan... In this business, the first person they're going to look at is Mack Truck. Why? Because I'm the one with that history, that background uh, um, of a violent background in fitness. So they're going to look at me first, regardless if I'm a part of the bullshit or not. If I had anything to do with it or not, they still going to look at me. With that being said, I got to be wiser and leave that alone. I can't be... Running around with Cali down here inside people's job, disrespecting people's working at McDonald's, disrespecting people's work at the gyms, pulling knife on people's at the gym. I can't be around that because I'm the one that really is. A, I really have that that, that gangster background. I don't. Nah, oh, I do that. I don't do none of that. I'm not gonna raise my voice. I'm not gonna yell. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna smirk and be like, "Oh, okay," because I know what I can do and what I'm gonna do. Worst thing can happen. What? Get my ass beat. I ain't got my ass whooped a lot of times. And I whooped a lot of ass. You see what I'm saying? So I have nothing to prove in that background, in that area, in that arena. So that's why I don't hang or do work with those type of peoples no more. Nothing good come out of it for me. It only keep negative light on me. Here go to 180 now. LA Fit Expo, reaching out to Flex CBD, asking for my content so they can post all over their website now now they they like my truck now they they like my truck they saying now like this dude just not fit to quit he's not fit to give up no they said i couldn't be a pro bodybuilder he don't have what it takes he's lazy prove them wrong they say that i'll never be nothing we only know because of rich y'all only knew rich because of mutant you only going to know somebody because of who introduced that person to you. That don't mean that was a nobody before you met them because I'm still a somebody. You see what I'm saying? Like I have my own motorcycle club that I put together and brought out. Those guys, there's a lot of guys in my in my clubs and all six of my chapters that don't like me. And that's cool because I don't hang around people that don't like me. Now, they got to respect the patch. That's the only thing that matters to me. Respect the patch. And respect me, because when I'm giving it, I respect it. And I expect it in return. You see what I'm saying? So that's just life, man. 
she gonna come gonna come at you all different angles. And you gotta know when to hold and when to fold. And you gotta know that you cannot be inconsistent when it comes to this shit. I'm consistent as hell. I'm like that roach in the corner while you keep kicking in that motherfucker trying to kill it, ain't going nowhere. That's what I am. You know, people's wonder and ask me, how do you deal with all of the negativity that come your way? People's talk about you so bad. How you deal with the negativity? I said, easy. The way I was brought up, the way I was raised, I wasn't wanted. I wasn't needed. You see what I'm saying? So growing up in a household where you constantly hear, you ain't going to be nothing. I don't like you. I can't stand you. But I got to love you because you my child. It started from there. Thick skin. You see what I'm saying? So this, them peoples, is nothing. Fights is nothing. I got my ass beat all the way until I was 16. And the only reason why it lasted that long is because... I was still just trying to be a good child. I knew I did shit, but I didn't do nothing that bad to where you got to get beat. Oh my whoopings. I got beat bad to where my arms would be big, ass be like just swole, fracture this and that. And there was no one there to protect me. You see what I'm saying? So that's why when it's a crowd of people's telling me to take a walk, it's not a problem for me to just go ahead and fight right now because what's the worst gonna happen? You gonna hurt my body? You gonna kill me? Okay. I've been getting killed all my life by my own peoples. So I'm not worried about that. You see what I'm saying? So it's like the way I was brought up, I was conditioned for this. I was taught not to quit, taught not to, not to uh, give up because I almost gave up. You know, like, I was 16 and uh, we was living in Anaheim. Keep in mind, I grew up really well. All the fly shit, fancy cars, going to school in Rolls Royce, everything. Everything was nice, you know, financially. But uh, parenting and support, I, I didn't get hugs when I was a kid. You know, the I love yous and all of that. I ain't get those then. I didn't get them. I give them to my kids, you know. And I, I, I don't, four of my kids, two of them could really care less about me, which is sad, but it is what it is. I'm still doing my job. So I'm conditioned for this, right? So when I was 16, before I go to 16, let me take you back to when I was six and seven I had a hard time in school trying to learn you know like y'all make fun of me because of how I talk can't pronounce words right that's cool that don't bother me either because I got it bad in the house you can't even say milk you say mur. you can't say street you say squeak like <laughs> I was conditioned I was drugged as a child badly and I'm conditioned for this. I was like six, seven years old. I asked my mom, I said, mama, could you give me the hook on phonics? She like, what the fuck? I look like getting that for you. Hell nah. I ain't buying you no hook on for me. Nope. I'm like, damn. Keep in mind, my words was doing all type of stuff. I couldn't grasp certain shit. Couldn't read, couldn't read, worth a damn, barely was writing right. This is seven, all the way up until I was 16, right? I was getting scared because my stepdad would always tell me, yeah, when you hit 18, you out on your own. So I'm like, damn, they kicking me out when I hit 18. I was, I was frightened, right? And I wrote as best as I can. a letter to my mother. And in a letter, it was, this is it. I'm gone. I can't make it out here. 
I can't read. I can barely write. So I try to take my life. I didn't try to take my life because of the beatings. I ain't trying to take my life because of getting made fun of, of not getting my birthday celebrated, of not getting proper shoes and clothes when I got to watch all my siblings get theirs, right? I didn't try to take my life. <laughs> it was because I'm about to be 18 in two years and they kicking me out. So what I'm going to do? I can't, I can't put it together. So my mom... She called me just in time. She sat there. She was, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you get job applications and teach you how to fill them out. I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help you. Here it is today, my mama ain't helped me yet with that. And now she can't, cause she can't help herself cause her illness. So one day I'm at school I'm in my history class. One of my teachers, he's seen it. He said, when class over, I want you to go somewhere with me. He took me to this other part of the school and they taught me what it is about me to where it was hard for me to learn a certain way. Dyslexia, didn't know, right? They had hooked on phonics that taught me. I learned how I told myself, they showed me like, maybe three weeks, and I taught myself how to read off of Hooked on Phonics when I asked this woman when I was six. <laughs> when I was six. To get that same thing for me. Now, she wish she could hug me. She tell me she love me and all this shit. It don't mean nothing really because all the way up until just about two years ago, she tried to fix it and she told me, I don't know why I couldn't love you. I did the best I can. I said, but you didn't with the others. I watched them and I helped them celebrate their birthdays. We couldn't celebrate mine. So, I don't give up. And if I would have gave up at 16, I wouldn't have never been able to teach myself how to read. I wouldn't have never been able to teach myself how to write. I taught myself how to cook because I got beat for being in the kitchen for cooking. My stepdad thought that a man's job is outside. So every time I was caught in the kitchen, I got beat. I didn't get whoopings. I got my ass beat for cooking and cleaning my clothes. I don't need a woman for nothing. I tell them all the time. And I told my mama this the other day. I said, man, I'm glad I got the shit beat out of me for getting caught in that kitchen cooking. I'm glad. This dude can't do nothing without a woman. So one of my uncles, as I got older, as an adult and everything, he started seeing different layers of me and realizing he was like, I know I'm your uncle and everything, but you my son. That's that's my pops. You know, like like he's everything. Everything. He watches everything I do. He supports everything I do. When I'm doing dumb shit, he calls me on it. You know, so and I always be like, damn, if I had him in my life early when I was a kid, knowing all of this, man, I'd have been something special. And I just start thinking, like, damn, I am something special right now. I'm dope as fuck. Dope. Taught myself how to drive and driving since I was 12. Been drinking since I was 12. <sighs> man. So the moral of this is, I don't care how hard shit get. You can't give up. You got to be consistent. And you got to keep grinding. Look at me. I'm grinding. LA Fit Expo this week. I'm at two booths. I'm at the Flex CBD booth. Then I got to make appearance at the Built Hydration Drinks booth. I'm going to be over there for an hour. Then I'm going to be at Flex CBD 
for the majority of my um, day, meeting a lot of people's Flex CBD booth is 851 uh, built. Theirs is 1140. I'm going to be right there. The Flex CBD booth is right in front of the stage uh, where the competition is going to be and everything. Um, it's just about to be a party. You know, I make really good money. Got beautiful kids. You know what I'm saying? I've uh, been married twice. Still have great relationships with my kids' mothers. You know, and I can't complain. All my vehicles is paid for, don't have car notes, you know, regardless of the years of them, they never came with a car note because I paid for them cash flat out. So it's just, when you feel like this is it, trust me, it's not. It ain't in the beginning. I'm just now scratching the surface and I'm here now. It's my turn. My time and my turn. It's time for the real people to get respect now. The fake, they got to move out the way. They got to move out the way. If they ain't finna be real, open, honest, and transparent, get the fuck up out of here. We don't support that. Anyway, this bathroom diary is long as shit right now. I ain't mean to hold y'all. If y'all watched it all the way to the end, I greatly appreciate each and every last one of you guys. And, uh, I'll let y'all later. All right? Until next time. Y'all suck it easy. And that means take it easy. Just in another word. So don't go out there and suck your titty. Or dig a lane. Okay? Fuck it. Go suck your titty for me. Because I ain't got no titties to suck right now. <laughs>